podcast. My name is Melanie Nevis. And I'm Tegan Moeen. And we are going to take a slight pivot here because we've been talking about all things related to Celtic mythology and folklore. Um, But we're going to take a bit of a turn to something that's a little bit more historical, that's in a lot of historical texts. And I don't know that we can talk about Celtic folklore and tales and traditions without speaking of the angriest woman in all of Britain who went toe to toe (laughs) with Rome. Oh, (laughs) snap. Yeah. Queen. Yeah. Queen Boudicca. Queen Boudicca. Like, and so I don't think you have heard too much about her before. Me? I, I don't know. I don't know a thing. I was kind of like, I'm going to be told today. So I'm just, I'm just excited to be here. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, cool. Um, so Celtic women, we've kind of talked about a little bit. They were pretty distinct in the ancient world in that they actually had a fair amount of liberty and rights and they enjoyed positions held in society, which compared to Greek and Roman counterparts and other ancient societies, they were allowed a lot more freedom of activity and protection under the law. Mm -hmm. So Boudicca was this ancient queen. And in Celtic, Boudicca itself means victory. So we don't actually know if that, like Boudicca might just be the name that was given to her, but not necessarily her name. And like, there's a lot of things that we don't know about Boudicca. Okay. Here is what we do know. So I'll just dive right in here. Here's what we do know. We know that she led a revolt against Roman rule in ancient Britain in the year 60 or 61. Oh, damn. This is when crazy Emperor Nero was in power. And he is depicted as being crazy, cruel, and evil. Mm -hmm. If you know anything about Nero, he's nuts. Okay. Um, (laughs) He's just like one of the craziest Roman emperors. Okay. And all of the information that we have about Boudicca comes from Roman scholars, particularly Tacitus and Cassius Dio. Very little is known of her early life. It was, or it is believed that she was born into an elite family of Camelodunum, which is now Colchester Hmm. in the year 30, roughly. Okay. Okay. So we know at this point in the year 60, 61, if she was born around the year 30, she's in her 30s. She's in her early 30s, probably. We also know because, of course, of course, whenever we talk about women, even now, we don't necessarily talk about the things that they do without first discussing their appearance and how they sound. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) I mean... So Cassius, right? Even (laughs) now, it's all about how you look versus the work that you've done, right? We see this in media time and time again. Absolutely. Cassius describes her as being very tall and the glance of her eye most fierce, her voice harsh. And she had a mass of the reddest hair, which fell down to her hips and her appearance was terrifying. Wow. She sounds like a boss. She sounds like a boss. And I'm really conflicted about Boudicca because today she is a national heroine and this embodiment of the struggle for justice and independence. And I totally get that. And she's kind of seen as this feminist leader. And I I totally understand where all of these things are coming from. Mm -hmm. But I also have problems with some of her actions. Okay. (laughs) Like I understand them. And also I have problems with them. Yeah. And, And I'll kind of go into that as we go along. So, At about the age of 18, she got married to a man named Prasitagus. And again, this may just mean leader or be an official title. We don't know. Her husband was the leader of the Iceni tribe, which is located in modern day East Anglia. And the Iceni are surrounded by really big tribes. What's up? East Anglia? So is that like England, I guess? Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's in England, and it is yeah, the eastern sure. part of England, Norfolk, Suffolk, um, and like Cambridgeshire and Essex. Okay, okay, are okay. also included in that area. So they are, yeah, located in modern day East Anglia. The Iceni are not the smallest tribe, but they're not definitely not the biggest either. They're surrounded by some other really big tribes. Now, before Emperor Nero came into power, because Boudicca leads her revolt when he's in power. So before Nero, there was Claudius. Claudius was in power when the Romans conquered southern England in the year 43. And most Celtic tribes at this time were forced to submit. But the Romans let Prasitagus continue in power as a forced ally of the empire. Interesting. So when he died without a male heir in the year 60, the Romans then annexed his kingdom and confiscated his family's land and property. Mm. Yeah. So again, we don't necessarily know that Boudicca was the queen or if she was just married to the king. We don't know those sort of inc- inter- intricacies. Yeah. The story is told by Tacitus, whose father or father in law was potentially there and may have witnessed Prasitagus die. Okay. And we think that he died, it's likely of natural causes. And before he died, he kind of tried to make a bold move where he said that he'd leave half of his throne to Emperor Nero and half of it to his daughters with the hopes that Nero would leave them alone still. Because remember, he's like this forced ally, but he's kind of playing with them, Mm -hmm. so still managed to lead his people. Yeah. The Romans at this point in Britain have gone a little bit power hungry, and they are beginning to treat the Britons like slaves rather than allies. So, Well, I mean, that's almost almost like in their DNA at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do they do when they find out? What do you think that they do when they find out that Prasitagus has died? Uh, They go balls to the walls and (laughs) start enslaving people all over the place. (laughs) They enter Iceni. They rape Boudicca's daughters and strip and thrash Boudicca herself. Oh, Not this time. Oh, stupid me. Yes, they particularly go for the women. Duh. Yeah, that's of course, of <laughs> course, that's what they would do. Well, and the women of his family specifically. So yeah. at this time, the thrashing would have only been done to slaves. So thrashing mm. the former king's wife mm. was really done to demoralize and Mm. humiliate her and show her that she was no longer in power. Mm -hmm. So they take away her kingdom. They take away her daughter's chastity. They take away her standing as a woman, as a human being, and they cast her out of her tribe. Why? Okay. And this basically pushes her into saying that Romans have become so imperious that not even the body of a princess is safe anymore. And if they aren't safe, then none of us are safe and we need to fight back. So it's Uh, like a really triggering incident at this, that leads to this point. And at, I think at this point, she thinks that she really has nothing left to lose, which really she doesn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when the story of the Iceni and Boudicca start out, they really aren't major players. Mm-hmm. And at the beginning of the rebellion, she's not a threat to Rome. But what happens next puts her on their radar. So Colchester is the biggest Roman settlement in the area. It's the place where they're focusing all of their detention, where they've decided to build a new temple to Claudius, who they had decided is a god. So the emperor that went and conquered... Uh, the British people basically want all the Celts. They want to go there. They want to become priests and they want the Celts to worship them. They want the Celts to worship the people who have conquered them, essentially. Okay. Okay. So they're building this new temple to Claudius Mm -hmm. in Colchester. After the attack on her daughters, Boudicca immediately begins summoning people for 
supporting her revolt. And while the Romans are busy fighting the Druids, who had raised a native population and their leaders against Rome in the west of Britain and North Wales, Boudicca spots her chance for revenge. Okay, so the Romans are busy killing Druids. They're you can't preoccupied see my face with that. right now, but it's a face of uh, okay. Yes, the Romans are killing yeah. the Druids. Romans are busy killing Druids. Remember, they are the occupiers. Huh, I see some similarities happening. Do you? Yeah, yeah. OG <laughs> colonizers. No, I don't even know that they're the OG, but I think like no, I'm sure there's other people that. Oh, no, they're, they're not. They're not the original colonizers. But they're, they were. They 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 like did it really well. Like I guess a lot. Even the British kind of like modeled the the way that they went forward in time when they became the newest version of the colonizers. They modeled it after yeah. the Romans, right? Like that's why yeah. the Roman Empire is considered like. So epic. And that is fucked up. And the fact that we think that the Roman Empire is fucked up because of the way they took over other places should be a giant red flag. I digress. I've Googled images of this woman while you're telling me the story. And I'm just looking at pictures of her. And damn, I'm feeling it. Okay, let's keep going. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Romans are busy fighting against Druids up in the North Wales and like West of Britain. Mm -hmm. And Boudicca spots her chance for revenge. And she meets with other leaders of the Iceni, the bigger tribes around them, like the Trinovanti, the Cronovi, and other nearby tribes who also had grievances against the Romans for imposition of heavy taxes, grants that had all of a sudden been redefined as loans, taking over of land. Uh, The Roman attempts to suppress Celtic religious practices, Mm. um, they basically plan to revolt and drive out the Romans and Boudicca was chosen as their leader. So this is not an easy task. These tribes hated each other. They've been competing for resources for a really long time. They're competing for trade routes into continental Europe. They're competing for trading contacts for land, for power. They have their own cultures and histories and they hate each other. However, they've got a common enemy now and they're coming together to fight the Romans. And there is this idea that they can go back to fighting each other if they can get rid of their common enemy. (laughs) That's dark, but kind of funny. But yeah, Yeah. that feels real though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we hate you guys, but these guys are fucking worse. They're worse. They're way worse. So Boudicca in her retaliation burns Colchester to the ground. They level houses. They break Roman statues and tombstones. They burnt the entire settlement. They took no prisoners. Every Roman citizen in the city was killed. Okay. So these are, are these warriors or are these people? And is this part of what you were saying you don't necessarily? I don't agree. These are just regular citizens. Yeah. Okay. In no situation should regular citizens be obliterated okay but let so me while i understand her frustration and i totally understand her retaliation i don't think that you could just like kill the people okay so like, let me ask know, you this question discriminately because in the last yeah. it, this was i don't think we recorded it before we recorded the podcast we were talking about i was telling you how like a lot of the settlers from that the French settlers that settled in North America came mm-hmm. from Brittany, right? And I mm-hmm. said they were colonizers. And I was like, well, maybe they're not colonizers. Maybe that's not the right word. And you were like, they're all colonizers because they all went over. But like, yeah. wouldn't the Roman people in this situation be the same thing? Because they're like, they're just normal people, but they are ultimately, they have chosen to like go over to this other place and like yeah. start a life. So yeah, are they just normal people or are they colonizers? They're for sure colonizers. They're for sure colonizers. However, if they are just trying to live, like you have to look at who's trying to work also in tandem with the people that are there. So like, no, they probably shouldn't have gone over in the first place, but are they part of the army who's going around and killing people or are they just, did they just go over because they're looking for a new opportunity to settle? Yeah, I think that's always the situation. Like we even, we always saw that like, mm, this isn't real history, but like even in the show, the Vikings, they, in Vikings, they did that too, right? Mm -hmm. Like the Vikings 
technically come over with violence into the UK, but they actually convince uh, whoever it is at the time to like let a group of their people like settle there and uh, cultivate land. Right. So yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit of a gray area, but I totally get what you're saying that like sometimes people, it's a we don't know, area we don't for... know what the motives of the people that are just coming to like farm and live. We don't know what their situation was. Like maybe yeah. they didn't have so, a lot. And I will were. say that it's, it's a gray area for that point in time. At this point in time, things have been relatively settled. We know where people okay. are. So no wars should be committed over this shit now. We oh, have you too mean much like information now. present day. Pre- I'm just saying in present day. I'm just saying like it's you're saying that it, it could be kind of gray. And I'm like, yeah, at that point. Oh, historically. Kind of gray. Yeah, at, not now. Historically, not now. There's no gray now. No, 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 no gray now. <laughs> historically, back then when people didn't have like mass ways to educate themselves. They on didn't these know. Yeah, it's totally yeah. a totally different thing. And you're also a victim of your own country's propaganda back then absolutely so you could definitely absolutely. like be living in rome not have a lot and potentially be told you're going to have like a better opportunity there and you're probably not even told about the people that are there so like that's yeah that's a whole different ball of wax yeah for sure for sure mm-hmm. anyways Country I, digress, propaganda but I just think now. it's like an interesting you know thing mm-hmm. to think about so she goes in and she like legit fuck shit up and i get what you're saying because at yeah. the end of the day we don't like want like families massacred that's usually what we're trying to oh, hopefully trying well that's to just it like everyone was killed man yeah. woman child right like oh, everyone no. was killed but i can also see her being blinded by her rage as well probably yes to a absolutely degree. and i so i see both sides but i don't think that people should just be killed indiscriminately yeah fair enough all the time Especially when you get children involved. I also feel, though, because she's a woman, she kind of had to, like, lay the smack down or else maybe she was thinking, like, these guys are not going to take me seriously if if I'm picking and choosing. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, they do this. It makes everyone see that they're a genuine threat and it excites the other Celtic tribes. And so they start joining on like more and more Celtic tribes start joining on because they're starting to think like, yeah, maybe we can take on the Romans. Maybe we can do this. Maybe we can Mm -hmm. get our country back and our land back. And upon hearing about the revolt, the Roman governor, Gaius Suetonius Paulinus, who had been killing Druids up in uh, Anglesey. So that's again, the island in Wales. Mm -hmm. leaves Anglesey to get to Londinium, modern day London. And he's got two Roman legions with them, which is about eight to 10,000 men, plus a few more on cavalry. Oh man. Um, But it's going to take him a while to get to London. Boudicca is a lot closer. She's only about three or four days away from London and she's able to continue recruiting troops and gathering reinforcements as she goes. London's really badly reinforced. And it is set on fire. So that governor rides ahead. And by the time he arrives, he sees that he's too late. He tries to evacuate some people. He's not able to evacuate as many as he'd like. Boudicca's warriors burn and destroy the entire settlement. And they kill anyone who's unable to leave. There are no survivors. Boom. So if you weren't able to leave, you're dead. Mm Mm-hmm. The legion is on its way and another legion had heard about this and they were also on their way. And this is the ninth legion and the ninth legion is one of Rome's most elite regiments. They're all the way up in Lincolnshire. They'd heard about the burning of Colchester. They decide to head south, but Boudicca intercepts them and she destroys them and she wipes out their infantry and the cavalries and the leaders. And we don't know how she did this because again like yeah. the ninth legion is like the super elite super badass legion hmm. they know what they're doing now like we don't know how she does it it could be because the romans just thought celts were really shitty fighters and really incompetent and underestimated them Seen as a result time and of time that. again yeah mm-hmm Right. It could be that she legitimately planned a really successful military ambush Mm -hmm. or that she had gotten enough Celts that they 
just outweighed the number of men in the Legion, or it could be any combination of those things. Like we don't know. It is still one of the great military mysteries. It's still something that they make movies about. Okay. Like they just, they don't know. So this is a huge blow to the Romans, like really, really big deal. And towns are being taken, but like, and in, for an entire legion to be lost, that's thousands and thousands of people that poof, disappear. Wow. That's never really happened before. Mm-hmm. So it's unprecedented in Roman history. Cool. Women have always been smarter. <laughs> I don't know. That's like a, a overtly like feminist like statement. But I mean, like, I mean, she probably just thought about it. She's she's gaining resources and stuff wherever she goes too. Like yeah, she's she probably you know, had a really good plan. She probably had some scouts who was able they were able to tell her where they were coming from and they probably were able to plan something out, but we honestly don't know. There's a lot of there's quite a few documentaries and like a lot of movies about this as well. Really? Okay. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Eating my so, raisins like popcorn over here. <laughs> Boudicca's army is now going to Verlanium, which is now St. Albans. And, you know, at this point, again, that governor, um, the guy killing the Druids in Anglesey, has managed to get his army together. And his army consists of the men from Anglesey, a few, very few of the cavalry that escaped from the Ninth Legion, joined him in Exeter. And, um, or join, they joined him. And then the Legion in Exeter was terrified to join him and said, no, thanks. <laughs> so he's going in, he's got about 10,000 people, which is really not a very large number of, of people for the Romans. And historians think that Boudicca's army really outnumbered this. We do not know if this is true or not. But historians think that she may have had near 100,000. Oh, wow. So 10,000 10, versus 100,000. Wow. So she's going to uh, St. Albans. She raises it to the ground and destroys it. The governor is headed in this direction and... The way St. Albans is laid out, there's like a road that crosses through it and then like goes out to the area that he was coming in from. And he wants to draw her into battle. And Romans are notoriously great with strategic military prowess. So although she's been going around and burning all these settlements, he's been collecting an army, but also has been plotting and figuring out his next step. So they're really strategic. So he draws Mm -hmm. I was wondering about them into Yeah, he draws them into a valley with a really narrow entrance to the battlefields. And Uh behind them he picks a space which has forests. So they're forced to come into a very narrow Narrow space. Yeah. We know from Tacitus that he is heavily he has his like very heavily armed infantry in the middle, light armed infantry on either side and on the far side from the cavalry. So the Britons are basically forced to come down in a column and then they're taken out from all sides. So it creates this bottleneck into this yeah. thing. They're taken out from all sides, right? So the Romans have the higher ground. They have the vantage point. Boudicca's army had to also attack uphill. Mm, fuck. Okay, so they're a bottleneck valley uphill. The people behind don't know what's happening at the front. They can't see right. what's going on. Right. So they continue to enter this battleground. And this is like a huge, dis- they're in a bottleneck going uphill. It's a major disadvantage mm-hmm. for the, for Boudicca's people. Mm-hmm. The sad thing is that at this point, well, there's a lot of sad things about this, right? But one of the sad things for Boudicca is that at this point, um, they were getting very excited. So they actually had families and carts around the back 
Like they were so convinced that they would win. They had their entire families with them. Oh no. And their, their carts of things with them oh, around shit. the back. So when Boudicca's people realized that they had to retreat, but like they had all of their families to watch from wagons in the surrounding fields, the wagons barred their escape route. Right. Oh my God. They, they couldn't actually leave. So Tacitus said that the Romans killed nearly 80,000 Britons and they only wow. lost 400 men. Oh my. Yikes. Yeah. Okay. So again, the numbers are probably untrue. They're probably exaggerated. Yeah. In favor of the Romans. So like the For Celts sure. had like such a massive, massive army and the Romans only had a 10th of their army yeah. and still defeated them. They only had 400 losses and they killed 80,000 Celts. Like that's probably yeah. very exaggerated. Yeah. However, needless to say, the mm -hmm. Romans are the victors here. Yeah. In revenge, the Romans executed the Iceni and their allies or made them into slaves. Oh, man. Their lands were taken over by the military. Their families lost their hereditary homelands. And this great rebellion was over. Jesus. And the final result of this was that the Romans actually strengthened their military presence in Britain. Mm -hmm. And they were there to stay for another few hundred years. Wow. Um, we don't actually know what happened to Boudicca after the war. So some Damn. people suggest that she escaped with her daughters to another part of Britain Would be nice. where they drank from a poison chalice and died. Okay. <laughs> Cassius Dio just wrote that she fell sick and died and was given a lavish burial. Well, we don't know. It seemed that they were saved from captor in some way. Like if they had been captured by the Romans, that for sure would have been recorded. They would have made a victory parade before church torturing and like displaying their body to cheering crowds, you know? Do you think so? That for yeah. sure would have been recorded. I think so. Okay. I think so. But we don't know where their bodies are. We have no idea where their burial are. Like some people believe that she was buried at Stonehenge. Other people think that she was buried in Norfolk or what, well, like who knows? Oh, there's this weird theory that she was buried, um, in London under the platform belonging to London's King Cross station. Oh, really? Yeah. They have found some I don't funky know stuff in London. Yeah, they have. They're, yeah, there's so much history there. So I don't know. And like, I, I don't necessarily know that I would want Buddha to be my um, heroine for female empowerment if she's also going around and indiscriminately killing women and children. Well, I mean, like me personally, like she's a warrior. I wouldn't. She's a warrior for sure. But like, she's like this national heroine and uh, feminist like icon. I guess. Yeah. No. Yeah. And I don't know that I would want her as my feminist icon personally, because I don't like, again, her actions um, are not great. I, I understand them. I understand where they're coming from, but I don't yeah. think that indiscriminately killing people at any point is good however does it make you better i, I guess than like however i do think that like the romans as colonizers were absolute asshats and should not have colonized and it's really unfortunate that it actually made them stronger that this rebellion actually gave them a stronger foothold in the mm -hmm. end even though she took out three settlements and like burned them to the ground and destroyed them well i think it's interesting you know i feel like I feel like there's something in this story that like, okay, we know, we know the massively destructive things, the three main destructive things she did, which take down these villages. But when it comes to this huge battle, there's no idea of anything that she did. Like nobody knows why. Obviously she had a strategy as well. You know what I mean? There must've mm -hmm. been a strategy there. And it's also interesting that, once the Romans win, then we don't know what happens to her. It, it, though I feel like maybe if she was a man, maybe she would have been like presented on display. I, I get the sense that maybe I think with a lot of women in history, the best way to get rid of them is just to erase them come almost as much as they possibly can. And so all of a sudden. But she wasn't because like this is really like hell hath no fury, like woman scorn. Like I'm pretty sure 
this is the story that <laughs> that comes from. Really, I don't know if it comes from it, but the, like that phrase, when I hear that phrase, I think of this story. Like they are linked for me because honestly, she wreaked havoc. I just think it's kind of convenient like that, that these like two main incidences, just like we do, it is like no information. If history, it was written by them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I just don't trust it fully, you know, but I think it's really interesting. Well, and- here's the thing. So the person recording history, Cassius, mm-hmm. like the person that we know of this history from, he actually hates the Roman empire. So, oh, but right. he also really doesn't like women. So he's part, he's a Roman, right? And Cassius hates the Roman empire very clearly in all of his writing he detests what they're doing but he also has the real complex with women Mm. and women in power and so he also really doesn't like Boudicca yeah but because he's the one that's recording this history on on behalf of the Romans I guess and like this is like the history that's kind of lasted this is why we know that this is one of the reasons that we know that Nero was such an asshat and Claudius and all of them but he, he also it. the way that he, he 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 wrote it like Cassia doesn't he doesn't like the Roman Empire. I think that he actually admired Boudicca, but would never say so because she was a woman. Right, still a misogynist so, at the end of the day. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wild. But I think that if the Romans had paraded her and Cassius knew of it, he would have written it down because it reflects negatively on the empire. Oh, I think so too. I think that you know what I mean. I mean, I just think that they probably just decided to disregard of her quietly, so that like little attention was drawn to what this woman did. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe that's kind of. I don't know. Yeah, Cassia just said that she fell sick and died and was given a lavish burial. That's that's what he recorded. I don't know. I think that if she was paraded in the streets, he would have written it down. Oh yeah, for sure. But like, this is all hearsay. I mean, like he 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 hears this story from his father in law, who was said to have been there for these things. Oh, he hears so it like, from we don't from who? Sorry, his father in law. Oh yeah, that's right. So his father in law is recounting yeah. the the story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's so wild. So yeah, I'm like very conflicted about Boudicca because I think she's super badass and justified in taking out these Roman forts. Um, but I think that indiscriminately killing people is bad and like children haven't done anything wrong. Yeah, it's a weird thing. It's such a weird thing. Like they like, could have done a war- lot of other things. War but- and warriors, there's a whole mm-hmm. mentality and especially also if the whole beginning of it is accurate and her daughters are raped and she's beaten, you know, she might, like you said, she might've just been seeing red the whole time. And, and For looking sure at did. that group as the whole group is the problem, not just these mm-hmm. specific people. I don't think, I don't think until we've had the ability to kind of look at things from like a stand back standpoint, like we've had more st- in a way, and not really, in a way, we've had a lot more stability to, like, be able to look at the past and see certain things. And we can see it from hindsight mm-hmm. that there's certain people that are at, yeah. that are causing these things outrightly. But I think when you're in the muck of it, it might not be so clear. You're just, like, in war. And it's not like they. I get it. The war Here, I'll be the, the first war. person to say colonization is fucking terrible. Shouldn't happen. Occupying territory that's not yours shouldn't happen. Get the fuck out. Oh my um. god. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then on the flip, it has been going on for fucking our entire existence as human beings. Somebody's been always trying yeah. to like take over someone else's resources. We have this inherent. Yeah ability in uh or this inherent I shouldn't say ability this inherent nature in us to be like really destructive and like some people if they get enough peace and they get enough space from it we can like pull back and look at that Mm -hmm. but a lot of people don't even get that they're just like in the thick of it forever yeah it's very destructive like war is very destructive energy right yeah so that's like and 
the understatement of this episode. <laughs> yeah, no shit. But I get what you're saying in terms of her being like an icon. Like, yeah, I get I get your conflict with that for sure. Yeah. I can yeah. also see I just, why like, they're I, trying to like almost make her that at the same time. I see both sides. I see totally. both sides and I haven't decided where I land. I don't think there's And I don't necessarily know that you have to pick a camp. Yeah. Yeah. I don't necessarily know that you, you have can to be pick like, a camp. I understand she fought. Like, yeah, she was and she was also and she, she was also tried brutal. To fight. Like see, yeah. and that's another thing. Yeah. With men, it's like it's very easily acceptable. He was a horrible person, but he did some good things. With women, it's like you gotta choose. No, she was bad she she did some bad shit and she had some bad shit happen to her. Like it's just, oh, it's more just like if I look at her as my feminist icon and I'm like, mm, yeah. no, yeah, I don't. Yeah. Personally, I don't. And so like I understand what some feminists are trying to do with that. Mm-hmm. I just – it doesn't resonate with me. It, it, I don't know that we could have a feminist icon that's not like a modern icon, you know? Yeah, but but all of these – ancient queens and uh, heroines of antiquity are being revered and venerated in a lot of ways now like if you go to colchester even though they burned it to the ground if you go to colchester today there's there's like little tributes to Boudicca everywhere yeah which is so interesting i get it i think she did destroy it (laughs) yeah true that but that's the way these these things always go though through history it's at the end of the day honestly it is they uh they they kind of get venerated for the 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 trying effort as opposed to the destructive kind of element right and honestly good on her and like it's crazy that this these actions ended up strengthening the roman foothold yeah that's a hadn't done that what would have happened like you'll never know maybe in an alternate universe something happened right but they probably would have just um, taken it's, over. It's like faster. the exact opposite of what she wanted to have happen is what happened, and that is really sad. Yeah, that is really sad. really sad. I think it's because interesting. It just, like made them occupy more. I think it's interesting because our last season we did on the Arthurian legends pick up after the Romans fuck off mm-hmm. after they're like, "Okay, hey, mm-hmm. we've been here for hundreds of years. You guys are super dependent on us. Peace out." This, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is kind of the opposite of that. And this is they like come in relatively recently, and then they like got their claws and they sunk them in deeper. Yeah, early, early in, and it's just it's so cool. Mm-hmm. I always, I always, I think I've said it to you before, which is like the dumbest thing I could ever say. But I've often said I wish we could do these shows like in a chronological order, but it's too freaking hard. Mm-hmm. It's impossible because you know everything is happening at once in the world. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean, like things. Things are happening on one hand, uh, and then they're complete. There's a complete other thing happening in another country at another time, and it's just like everything is like breathing. <laughs> so it's really hard to do. Yeah, that. but it's really interesting. There you go. That's your story of Queen Boudica, and uh, she's definitely worth me- mentioning and learning about because she's a female in power who like really went and tried to stand up to the empire which is really admirable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. It's really interesting uh, throughout the whole, um, there's just so many accounts of Celtic people or even later on, like Gaelic people, Scottish people. It's like, they actually never give up, right? Like they're always trying to defeat the people that have tried to take them over. And Mm -hmm. that resilience is quite impressive because we still know about it like to this day, right? Yeah. Exactly. And like things are not exactly what they were then, but there are certain traditions of unfortunately been lost to time and have died, but others are still holding on. There's a great story. I'll try to find if we ever get into like, I'd love to do a season just about like, like stuff related to French history and whatever, but there's a really good story I came across at one point about the Gauls who are like another Celtic group. The time that the Gauls go to Rome and they fucking defeat the Romans in Rome. <laughs> it's it's short lived, but it's <laughs> it's a story you don't hear much because they don't want people to know about that. <laughs> yeah, of course not. Never. Yeah. Never, never. Yeah. Anyways, we'll wrap it up here for today. So thank you so much for listening, as always. 
Find us on Instagram, Allegory Story Podcast, or send us an email to Allegory Story Podcast at Gmail. And that is all. We'll see you next time. Thanks.